Hello everyone. Good morning or good afternoon as per respective time zones. On behalf of entire Manus Services team, we would like to welcome you all to the 23C Benefits and Compensation Advisory Webinar Session. This important session is to keep you fully synchronized with the new features and functionalities as a part of this quarterly release that Oracle provides. My name is Sachin Mishra and I'm an Oracle Function Consultant and Mass Tech Manus Services team. So today I'm your host for this session and I'm glad to introduce my colleague Saksham Srivastav who is an SCM expert and part of our vast SCM team at Master. Today he will take us through all the benefits and compensation updates for 23C quarterly release. Today's session is planned for around 45 to 60 minutes and we will make sure that we also spare some time to answer all your questions that you may have. We also have panelists available, Aditya Anand, so you can ask any questions to chat or question panel. Before we move to the agenda, let's have a quick look at the important disclaimer. We would like to convey you our approach to our Oracle updates in a very simpler method. We will be taking you to vital analysis for the 23C updates done by our experts, which will help you incorporating new features and updates easily into the system. Also, we will sync you on any bugs, known issues if there are any. It's good to have an interactive session, so please do ask your questions to chat or question panel. We will answer them at the end of the session. In case if we run out of time, we'll make sure to respond you back by connecting you at later stage to answer your questions. So list of new features coming to 23C. Detailing on features so you get brief understanding of what new features are all about. Next one is what are the business benefits and the important takeaway for you as a decision maker? There are four components which we have done in depth analysis of features which we are going to present to you. The first one is impact level analysis, which demonstrate the impact on the end user. If it is low impact, then regression testing can be avoided. But if it's high, then we need to opt for regression testing. Second one is which is we are aware that there are some features which are by default auto enabled by Oracle and there are some which we need to opt for. Third one highlights the nature of the feature. There would be certain configurations which may be required or some can be used without any changes. Last one is quick win. This term we use to simply convey that what is ready to use by investing minimum amount of time and what require significant amount of time and effort to make use of this feature. So with this, now I'm handing over to my colleague Saksham Please unmute yourself. The stage is all yours. All the best. Thank you so much for the introduction, Sachin. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll quickly start with the uh, new features which have been introduced as part of the compensation and benefits uh, for 23C in Oracle. As you can see on the screen, in all we have 22 features of which 19 have been default and three are in the rest category the rest category this time around is basically going to focus on reporting and uh, the new subject areas and new objects which have been introduced in oracle to report on certain items for benefits and compensation okay we will be starting with quick win default with no configuration or minimal configuration features we'll go through the, each of these in detail the very first feature is test and validate participant eligibility profiles. So now we can uh, test validate the results of uh, new eligibility profiles in the plan configuration work area itself. How it can help us is earlier we used to create eligibility profiles then just to test them. We had to create either dummy users or dummy accounts and then test out the scenario whether if I have, for example created a scenario like a person is eligible only if they are of a certain age. To test it, you will need to create a user with that particular criteria, test if it is working fine or no. Now it can be done much easier and in the plan configuration area itself. 
the on the screen if you see on the bottom right we have highlighted the uh, status results and log if you download the log you will actually be able to see what the results of uh, the eligibility profile are so you don't need you need to go and create users just to test you can do your testing from here itself it basically improves the time you spend on your configurations so on and so forth and also avoids the risk of making mistakes moving on to the next feature we have compare eligibility profiles before and after import before we start just uh, a note for those of you who have been using oracle you know there's something called fsm functional setup manager which is used to migrate the configurations from one environment to another so now we also have an ability to compare eligibility profiles before and after the import how it can help us there's a good chance that uh, the configuration on production maybe is a bit different from test so you can use this to compare okay the eligibility profile in prod is it one to one with what we have on the test environment where we did all the testing if it is so well and good if it is not you can make your changes there and then before actually making it available to your end users in the company the next feature is hdl for close enrollment certification action items the new close enrollment certification items hdl loader can now be used to update receive date deny date for action items or certifications that will close the action items this can include eoi documents such as proof of good health birth certificate so on and so forth this thing was already available the only advantage you now get is that you can do it in mass you can do it for a bigger population at one go rather than going through you know for per person one by one and so on and so forth also a quick note if you see on the bottom this uh, the navigation given navigator my client groups data exchange import and load data this is actually the generic navigation for hdl so any mass updates when they are done in oracle not just limited to benefits but for anything this is the navigation you actually use you create a dart file zip it and upload it there and the system will take uh, all the you know navigate all the inputs you have given on your dart file all the changes you have given that will be loaded in the system in mass next feature is use hdl or hsdl for benefit standard rates so now we can use uh, hdl again a tool which is used to do mass updates in oracle hsdl it is also a similar tool it works in a different functionality but it also is has the same end result basically where you can utilize and do changes in mass you can do changes in one go for multiple people or a large population so now all calculation methods for benefit standard rates they are supported by hdl the hsdl templates on the other hand they only support create and update methods for your rates they don't support uh, uh, delete for example okay one more thing to note over here which you can see at the bottom of the slide is this enhancement supports only flat amounts and multiple of coverages methods when we are if you are using hsdl the business benefit of the enhancement is going to be that it gives you you know flexibility and also it improves the performance when you are managing large amounts of data you will need to spend less amount, uh, amount of time to make bigger changes now the next feature is use hdl or hsdl for benefits variable rates if you see on the screen again similar to how we saw in the last sli slide for standard rates we have hdl and hsdl now available for updating or ch making changes to variable rates and also variable rate profiles can be created starting from a specified date using hdl the values of existing variable rate profiles can be updated existing variable rate profiles can have their values corrected so for example you made a mistake you can do on let's suppose you made a mistake on a multiple of rates then you can correct it using hdl or hsdl in one go rather than going one by one and correcting those end date of an existing variable rate profile can also be updated using hdl now and an existing variable rate profile can be deleted using hdl so basically hdl again it will support everything hsdl it only supports just for a note it only supports create and update methods the delete method is not supported out of the box in the delivered hsdl template
The next feature is view document of records along with salary in employment info. So for those of you who have been using responsive pages in Oracle, you're aware of the employment info quick action which you have available. So a document record section has been added to the responsive employment info actions standalone salary details page. This enhancement basically allows users to easily view and access document of records within the page itself. If you see on the screen over here, you can see that on the employment info page at the bottom, you also have the document record section available now. All right, uh, moving on, we we'll look at the new features, quick wins, defaults with configurations. These features you will require either some configuration or it might be even a considerable amount of configuration in Oracle before you can actually utilize them and use them in your business day to day. The very first one, this is an important note also for everyone. For those of you who have been using the plan comparison feature in Oracle as of today, you will have to delete the existing quick action and a new quick action has to be enabled. This is due to architectural changes which have been made in Oracle. The next one we are going to look at is the use enhanced benefit service center. Now we have a lookup which can be utilized to apply a row limit on benefits dashboard count. So if you go to uh, benefit admin, click on enrollment, this is a page which basically pops up if you're an admin. Okay. If you see on the right of the screen, we have a count and in front of the account there is a plus icon so basically you can now create a limit for example i set up the limit as 5000 so how the system will show it will show me as 5000 and anything above that for the particular uh, transaction it will show as a plus icon in front of it the business benefit is going to be that it will enhance the performance of the application so it will be better if you utilize this your performance will improve the system will work smoother This screen basically shows how this limit can be set up on the last page, which you saw. So for example, over here, if you see, you have certain numbers and a plus sign in front of it. This limit, you can set up it up in this particular max row limit lookup. So if you go to the ma uh, manage lookups, common lookups task, over there, you will search for this particular code. And then at the bottom of the screen, if you see you have the max row limit, and over here, you can set up whatever you want as the maximum limit for the rows displayed on the screen. For example, you want, you can set it up as 5,000, 2,000, 20,000. A thing to note is the maximum value which you can set up is 50,000. It cannot be more than that. Okay, moving on to the next feature, we have the enforce plan dependency rules. So now we can configure the plan dependency rules in the plan type grouping page. This ensures that offerings are not, uh, you know, offerings are not enrolled into participants without first enrolling in relevant dependent offerings. Those who have been using uh, benefits before, you might might be aware of something called post-election formula. So earlier, what used to happen was, for example, you want to set up a criteria like someone should only be allowed to enroll in Plan B if they are enrolled in Plan A. For such scenarios, we were using that functionality of post-election formula. That formula, formula it performed the validation when you clicked on submit after making all the elections. Now you can actually and create these rules. Firstly, it's going to be much easier to create these from here. Secondly, you will actually get the validation after you make elections in the plan and just click on save. So you're going to get the prompt beforehand that hey, you need to enroll in plan A first only then you can enroll in plan B. Okay, uh, the next few pages we are going to look at the next few features, they are quite similar in the way that they are for the same functionality. Basically, a, a lot of you might be aware uh, that Oracle is now introducing a new UI or user interface called the Redwood UI. So the next few features we are going to look at are basically going to be for the same thing that Redwood UI is enabled and delivered now for different pages in Oracle. 
those of you who have been using journeys will already be aware of how uh, you know the redwood ui looks like and you might have also used some of the pages which were introduced in the prior updates before that so starting with the uh, feature of you know redwood ui pages which have been made available we'll start with the first one for the benefit person info if you see on the screen this is a new benefited info person page which has been recreated using the redwood ui basically the functionality how the page works it remains the same it is there is no changes in how you will utilize it the same as always it is going to be the only thing is the ui is going to change and it is now available in a better and more readable ui the redwood okay the next feature is enable again redwood ui experience for the benefit batch parameters so the benefit batch parameters page it has also been recreated in the redwood ui it improves our user experience by providing the you know same consistent functionality across the redwood pages the functionality on the page itself it remains the same so basically if you have been using the benefit batch parameters page before this the page in itself it remains the same the only change is going to be how it looks like now we're going to look at some of the recreated pages in the redwood ui for compensation module so the new active plan search page it has been recreated in the uh, visual Biz, uh, builder studio so again this page is now available in the redwood ui and is much more user friendly than it used to be one more thing i just want to add on to it is this page i believe mean, most of you must have utilized it when you have been creating act, uh, plans for your workforce compensation so the process and everything it remains the same the only thing which is changing over here is how the page actually looks like and how you uh, you know how the ui looks like on your desktops the next is redwood experience for additional plan information page so the plan information page again this page has been created in the redwood ui basically it's the same as how it used to be the only thing is that the user interface is going to be look different it is going to be in the redwood ui now if you want you can enable the redwood ui you can check it out and uh, if it meets your needs if, if it is something you feel like is more user friendly for the end users for the admins in the company definitely use it out if not the original pages we can uh, look at the um, profile options to keep it back in the responsive or the classic pages as per the need as the business has been using till now moving on we are the, have the redwood experience for total compensation categories the new compensation categories page it has again been recreated in the redwood ui by default this is turned on but you can definitely disable it using a profile option so as soon as the upgrade hits your non production environment check it out if it looks good very well and good utilize it if not you have the option to revert to the original page the classic and the responsive pages as for whatever you have been using till now the next we have is the redwood experience for total compensation items the new compensation items page has been recreated in the redwood toolset uh, visual Biz, uh, builder studio so again the same page however it has been uh, moved to a new ui you have a new user interface if you see on the screen also you can see a, a screenshot of how the new page will look like now if you feel like this is something which is uh, better than what you have been using till now in the uh, responsive pages or the classic pages you have the option to and uh, you know enable this one by default it will be turned on or if you feel like okay we don't want to move to redwood right now we want to actually wait and see how it goes what changes are going to be there what more things can be enabled on the page maybe new sorting options maybe will be available in down the line so on and so forth in such scenarios you can still wait on and not enable this page and go ahead and disable it the next is the redwood experience for review proposed progressions and salary updates review overview page so again the same the review proposed progression salary update page is now available for you to utilize in the redwood U U interface now so if with this new page you can find results easily i'll just go to the next screen to show so for example if you see on the top you've run a great step progression uh, process for 
GSP nerve says. So for, you can now filter it out from the top and you can only see the results. Uh, as per the grade ladder, for example, I just want to see the process for a certain grade ladder, I can do that. <laughs> Moving on, we have the Redwood experience for my compensation. So then my compensation page, it has been recreated with the Redwood toolkit. It can now be used by people when the Redwood experience is enabled. So again, it's a new UI. The pages are basically the same, these things you have been doing, but if you want to utilize it on the new UI, you have the option now to enable and move forward with that. I'll quickly show a couple of screenshots also. So to give you an overview of how the page actually looks like, for example, on the screen right now, you see that we have a select assignment There's a business title dropdown. From the dropdown, you can select which particular assignment you want to see the data for. For example, I work in a company where I have two different assignments. I'm working maybe as a consultant, also as a part-time IT person, for example. You will have those business titles available over there. You can make your election and see the different values and the different details for that particular assignment. Again, it's just a continuation of the my compensation page, basically the Redwood UI, how it will the current salary section will look like, how the additional compensation section will look like now in the new UI. Similarly, the personal contribution section is also going to look like this and on the Redwood UI. And similarly for the recurring and one time payment section. One thing you can see also on the personal contribution screenshot, which is on the left of the screen, under pending approval, you have an approval in progress box. So it looks quite neat, the new UI has it. Similarly, on the My Compensation, the Redwood UI, you have the total share summary, summary page, estimate stock value, share details. All the pages are now available in Redwood also for this particular section. If you can see over here, actually in the dropdown, again, for the uh, My Compensation page only, uh, the business title drop down over there, you can see the different uh, you know, assignments for this person. So they can just select, okay, I want to view details of my assignment A, I want to view details of my assignment B, I want to view details of my assignment C. They can select it from this drop down and based on that, it will be available and available in the Redwood interface now. If you want to you know, look at different uh, salary details, for example, I want to view the salary changes which were done, away, which was there for me in 2022. I want to view the ones for me in 2021, the salary details for myself in 2020, something like that. In this, from this particular start date dropdown, you can select that, you can select the assignment, the start date, and you can see, okay, these were the salary details at the time. This screen is again a continuation from the last one, how the salary details page in the Redwood UI basically will look like under the My Compensation area. Okay. Moving on, we have the Redwood experience for map third party plans. This page is basically you know, used by the admins. So now this page is also available in the Redwood interface. If you want to utilize this in the Redwood interface, you have the option to do so. If not, you definitely can utilize, uh, continue utilizing your old pages as in, you know, as, <laughs> as if you wish, basically. It's a continuation of the last screen only. The map third party and individual compensation plans, page listing and configured mappings between third party and individual compensation plans. This pages have also been created in the Redwood UI and are available now. Continue to the next one. It's basically a continuation of the last one. You can see how in the Redwood UI, the page will exactly look like commission MBO. What's the name uh, based on third party? What's yours? Uh, one, two, one for that, so on and so forth. Okay, moving on, we have the Redwood experience now also available for the run batch process page. So the new run batch process page created in the Redwood uh, Visual Studio is accessible by default. Again, you have the option to disable it. If you don't want to utilize this right away, you want to still wait and see for a couple more updates before you want your organization to move on to the new user interface. You have the option available.
Okay, moving on, we are basically going at the start of the presentation. I just show that we had three features on the rest available to us in the rest section. So now we are going to look at those three features basically. These are all pertaining to reporting. So the very first one is dependent original coverage start date in benefits enrollment subject area. So a new attribute has been added in the dependent called a dependent original plan coverage start date in the you know dependent information dimension in the benefits enrollments real time subject area. So for those of you who have been using OTBI to create reports for yourself, you have, will have this new option available for yourself. If you want to utilize this data, you want to view this data in a report, you have it available. You can just add the block in your OTBI report and the data will be available for the dependents. Next, we have a new subject area has been introduced called the compensation workforce assignment salary history real time. The new subject area allows reporting on assignment event details and salary details of the workers. Additionally, you can also report on grade rate details, grade ladder and other rate informations. This enhancement integrates basically all the details from workforce management worker assignment real time and compensation salary history details real time into a single subject area. So the two you see at the bottom um, paragraph, wo workforce management, worker assignment real time, and compensation salary history details real time. These two are already available. You have been utilizing, you must have been utilizing them to build reports and uh, use them for reporting, so on and so forth. Earlier, what we had to do, we had to link these subject areas if you want to create a report, which was basically, uh, you can say a combination of some objects from the subject area A and some objects from subject area B. Now you actually have a new subject area, which basically has uh, objects from both of them combined into one. So you don't have to actually go ahead and start the linking. You can just use a new subject area, which is the uh, workforce assignment salary history real time to report on these details. Over here on this screen, you can see actually what roles and duty roles are actually needed uh, you know, to secure this particular subject area. You want to make changes, what access you might uh, need over there. So one of the common things and very generic is that people use custom roles in Oracle. So in case you have a custom role, you feel like, okay, this subject area is not working for me or it is not, uh, I'm not able to get the details from this, something like that. You, you will need to check your roles in that scenario. You check, okay, whether the job role assigned to the user has these particular privileges or not, or the duty roles are there or not. If not, you might have to add those and then you will be able to utilize all the functionalities which are available in this particular subject area. All right, that was all I, we had to cover as part of the presentation when it comes to the new features, I will give the handover to Sachin to take it forward from here. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Saksham, for the wonderful insights. As we have seen that there are some great features which had came up for this water release. So let's quickly move towards the Q&A part now. So I would request uh, Aditya, please unmute yourself and check that uh, if we had received any questions in the chat or question panel. Uh, no, Sachin, we haven't received any question. I think we can move forward. Okay, thank you, Alan. Thank you for the confirmation. So, see, there are these are the upcoming sessions which you can see on, on your screen. Please register or ask your colleague to register and be a part of this webinar. So, we have planned, we have scheduled the session like finance in, on 18 July, follow that SCM on same on date 18 July, follow that talent management, HR help desk and ORC, SCM inventory and order management. And also you will receive an email in next couple of days time, maybe three or four working days, wherein presentation and session recording along with test scripts would be available to you at a single click. So before you leave us, we would like to have quick feedback on today's session.
please your rate your all experience of today's sessions we are one being the lowest rating and five being the highest Thank you for the votes. So with this, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining the session. Have a good day.